Welcome to the Existential Empath Podcast. My name is Tanya and I am an intuitive empath. My intention is to share valuable tips, tools, and techniques that I have learned so you can tap into your own inner healer naturally and intuitively. Welcome back, everyone. Today, I have guest Raven Scott. Raven is a human design reader, spiritual mentor, certified meditation teacher, author, and host of the Empath and Narcissist podcast. She believes we are all unique and have a purpose that our energetic blueprint can reveal to us. After discovering her life's purpose, strategy, and inner authority through her own personal human design chart, it set her on a path toward healing and created a fire inside of her to help others do the same. Her mission is to help empaths regain their sparkle after the world has conditioned them to minimize it. Welcome, Raven. Thank you for having me. So we're going to have a really fun show today. So we are going to talk about human design, understanding your unique energetic blueprint. So Raven, I heard about human design. It was probably a little over a year ago. I had a friend send me a message that said, Hey, fill out this little questionnaire and tell me what comes up for you. And so when I did that, I found out that I am a manifesting generator, but that's literally all that I know. So you have actually read my chart and we are going to go through my chart live later on in the show. And we're going to dive a little bit deeper, but Let's start off with answering some questions first. So what is human design? Human design is similar to your astrology chart where you put your information in with your birth date and your location. And then it's a system that was downloaded uh, back in 1984. It's fairly new by Ra Uruhu. And it's a combination of all of the ancient systems. So it includes astrology, the I Ching, chakra system, Kabbalah, and then uh, actually even the, the gene keys, and then the science of neutrinos, so the actual science wow. of we are energy, right? We have this energy field around us. So it combines all of those things to create a very complex blueprint, just like your fingerprint, and sharing with you who you are. And the reason why it's so beneficial is you can see how you should be moving through the world. We're not all designed to just do it, like Nike says. Yeah, we're just you know? we're running around blind, most of us, right? <laughs> what is my purpose? And Where do I find it? Is it under this rock? Where is it? <laughs> yeah, and we're not all designed to do it like this coach says or that coach says. It's like always be wary of the one, you know, method solution for all because we're all unique. And so it really gives you like an, a manual, like an instruction book on how to make the right choices, how to tune into your soul and your intuition and it's just quite amazing. It was a life changer when I discovered my chart. I bet. And I have a feeling it'll be a life changer for me today too, you know? And so Raven, there's different types of human design, right? Different types. So I'd like to go through those one by one and discuss what they are before we uh, go through my chart. So that way people are aware and have a deeper understanding of the different types. And then when they can figure out their own, they'll have a better understanding. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, getting your chart is free. I just want to say that as well. If everyone's like, where do I even get it? There's lots of different websites, you know, mygeneticmatrix.com, uh, my human design chart, Jovian Archive. Those are just three of the ones off the top of my head. Um, but there are, are those different types. So the first one and the most, I would say, uh, com I want to say com common. Let me think of the right word. Uh, the, the population, <laughs> yeah, it's the most popular, it's not even popular, 30%, let's get back to the facts, 30% of us are generators, and then the other 30% are uh, manifesting generators. So these two types are very similar, but there's just a little bit more like you had mentioned. You're a manifesting generator, we'll start with that. You are a multitasker. You have this energy to be able to envision and initiate, but... <laughs> The takeaway is you also need to respond. Uh, so you yes. can't be like, I have a vision. Let's do it. Let's start this. Let's go. Like you have that energy, which can feel very frustrating, <laughs> but you also need to wait for the right timing and to wait to respond to somebody or something bringing that energy into your life to say, yes, 
hey, I was just thinking that the other day. Let's start this together, right? So you're going to have to wait for that. But you, that manifesting generator type, you're the ultimate multitasker. You usually have five books you're reading or <laughs> five projects you're doing. Right? I've always said that I can have 20 plates spinning above <laughs> my head and you can give me another one yeah. and I'm good. <laughs> and that's good. You're You're talented. You are the type that can do that. For instance, I'm a generator. Very similar. We have that we're a sacral being, what it's called. Our sacral center is defined and we constantly have that energy to do things. We have to burn it. Otherwise, we can't sleep at night. Like we just have to go, go and exhaust it by exercising and working. But the generator, uh, we're not good multitaskers. We can try, but we will fail. <laughs> we try and have those plates spinning above us. We'll drop one for sure or a couple. And I have that personal experience where I'm like, oh, I dropped the ball. I shouldn't have had so many things going on, right? And that generator has that focus of doing one thing at a time. And when you do that one thing at a time, you can bang that particular task out in like 15 minutes versus if you were multitasking, it'll take you five hours. <laughs> or the yeah, because you get sidetracked. You're like, oh, and I can, it's funny because I can notice where I, I'll be working on something and then I'm thinking about something else. It's almost like I'm here, but I'm not here. I'm yeah. So that yeah. must be a manifesting generator generator quality. <laughs> that is, that is, you have a very unique creative process and it's difficult, difficulty in this world, right? Our school system is kind of designed for generators, like go, you know, follow all the rules, go from point A to point Z, right? That's kind of like the traditional school system, but manifesting generators, they have a very unique creative process. You need to get your hands dirty in something. You typically start at X versus A, right? You're like, oh, but I already know exactly what's gonna happen. So let's just pop over here. Like shortcuts are your friends as manifesting <laughs> generators. Where generators are like, no, the map says, you go here, you turn right, you turn left, and the manifesting generator is like, nope, there's a shortcut right there. Go take that shortcut. <laughs> Gosh, this is bringing me back to when I worked in the corporate world and all of yeah. my teams and how I must have had a lot of generators on my team. <laughs> well, yes, there's, you know, the 33% is the, yeah. the most common. Yep. Yeah. So then that moves us to the projectors, which are, huh, let me see if I can get this, the, the percentage right. 9%. I have it written in my book. But oh, that's I'm, small. Yeah. I'm a horrible numbers person as far as remembering them. <laughs> I'm not a projector. Projectors are really good at remembering numbers. So it's a small percentage. I feel like it's in the teens, actually. Manifestors are 9%. Projectors are somewhere in the teens of people. And projectors are like the best managers you could ever have. They are the guides. They are not a sacral being. So their sacral center is white. And it's not defined. So that energy, instead of chugging along and having to do, do, do to exhaust yourself to sleep, that actually can create insomnia for the projector because they are an amplifier. Kind of like think of a radio and a speaker. They're amplifying the energy of the sacral being. So they can work alongside. They can still do work just fine. But when left to their own devices at the end of the day, they're not falling asleep in five seconds because they're exhausted. They're sitting there going, oh my God, like I have so much energy. I can't fall asleep. You have all these thoughts running through your head. And you just, as the projector, you need that extra time and space perfectly alone. To, I was going to ask that. Are projectors down. the ones who are alone a lot? Okay. <laughs> they do enjoy their own quiet time. Yes. You might find projectors being a little bit more introverted. They're absolutely extroverted. But when it comes to going to sleep, they need that alone time. And some people actually even thrive best if they do, they sleep alone. Because you're, you know, especially That's if you're me. laying yeah. next to a sacral, you know, being, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're amplifying that energy. Wow. So, okay. So we've got generator, manifesting generator, and projector. Are there any more? Yep. Generator, manifesting generator, projector. Yes. And then we have the manifester, which is that 9% of the people, that's the most intense. Those are the just do it people. Most intense, really beautiful, like initiating energy. They are the entrepreneurs that can get something started and gather all the people underneath them to get that big machine to work. They have vision, just like that manifesting generator. That's where that comes from. They have the vision. They see the way forward. 
And then they just go like they're super fast. They're like, I know how to get it done. Let's go. But that's really scary for most of us who have to respond, who are kind of like, ah, we have a process we got to work through. And so in order for that manifester to not hit blocks and to really succeed and flow in life, that strategy is to, um, I'm sorry, I got distracted because I'm like, we need to talk about the strategy of the projector. But the uh, manifesto strategy is to inform. Just speak it. Just take two seconds, right? If you're a manifester, you know you are. You know what I'm talking about. It's like, yeah, yeah two seconds is too long. We got to get going on this. Take, <laughs> take two <an> seconds. <laughs> yeah, and inform. Just let them know, hey, I have this great idea. I'm going to start this. And when you do that, it'll flow. If you don't inform, then you're going to start it. And people are like, hey, wait, stop. Don't do that. What are you doing? Right? Especially as a child, you get conditioned. But it's not safe to just go out and play on the tree, right? It's like, oh, you're going to fall. Don't do that. What are you doing? You have to tell me you went outside to play. I thought you were lost, right? And they get conditioned to to not really take that beautiful initiative action that they have. Wow. So can these cross over or when you read your chart, you're you're one of these or do these cross over? So you are one of these, but there's so many complicated parts in your chart that you could tend to appear to have a bit of that energy. For instance, I have a uh, life's purpose is called incarnation cross of dominion. And that particular energy is very intense. And so a lot of people mistake me who do read charts. They haven't seen my chart. Like, oh, you're a manifesting generator. No, I'm just a pure generator. Unfortunately, I have a bit of that extra kind of energy for my incarnation cross that may appear that I'm a, either a manifester or a manifesting generator. So there's all these little nuances. There's the, the gates and your channels you have in there that can be interpreted as a certain different type, but we all have one particular type that we have to follow that strategy for everything to manifest and work best. Oh, wow. So can you list the websites again where people can go find out what their type is? Yes. So you can find it at my human design chart geneticmatrix.com or Jovian Archive. Okay. And Jovian I, Archive think, is the, the main original. Yeah. I think website. I did the My Human Design chart. I think that's the one that I was guided to, to do. And that I was love neat. That was very so interesting. Yeah. 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 Each, I mean, the charts are the same, but as they're displayed on each website, it's different. You know, the different ways that they display it. It's a little bit different. Yeah. So Raven, does astrology play a role in human design? It does. And before I move to astrology, I want to just touch on the projector's strategy. If you're listening on this cliffhanger, like I'm a projector, what is my strategy? (laughs) Is to wait to be invited. So you have immense wisdom and people won't hear you. Your biggest frustration is your, your advice is always falling on deaf ears. So you need to wait to be asked for that advice. Or my, my clue, uh, the advice I always give is See, say to someone, I see something. Can I say something? Can I give you some advice? Ooh. And then they could that be waiting for a while if no one flow. asks them, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and exactly, exactly. And that, that's the thing with the projector's patience. The other type, last one is the reflector is patience. The reflector reflects everything. They're, can, they're the canary in the coal mine and they need to feel comfortable with where they're at. And their strategy is to wait 28 days. They are a pure lunar body. (laughs) And that's very rare. There's, I think, maybe 3% of the population is a reflector. Yeah, me and my friends, we all did this. And I don't think we had a reflector. I had a projector friend, several manifesting generator friends, and then a manifester friend. So yeah, yeah, it was just really fun to get a group of people together and be like, well, what are you? And what are you? And, you know, because I know, like you said, there's, there's more deeper layers to the onion, so to speak, when it comes to your human design chart, but it was just really neat to see what everyone is. I, I've always really been interested in astrology, and I guess that's why I ask, because yeah. I have um, I can pick out people's astrological signs very easily based off of their personality and whatnot, or I can usually hone it down to two. Yeah. <laughs> and so <laughs> this is neat minus. because <laughs> I love how they couple together. So can you talk a little bit about that? <laughs> Absolutely. So there are numbers on the side of your chart when you pull it up. And then in each of those squares is the planet, right? So it ties in very much to astrology. So the numbers are a number in the the center in your chart, and that's called a gate. 
And a gate is like a personality trait. And it goes back to the planet, right? Let's say you have Pluto and gate five, right? So, and gate five will link up to the planet's um, astrological ruler. So let's say, for instance, I don't have it in front of me. I don't have every single gate in their planet linked up, memorized, but let's say it's Leo, right? So like, oh, you know, Pluto, Leo, gate five. And so you have all this information from the I Ching, from astrology, and from the gene, the gene keys to really hone in, like, what is it about this personality trait, especially when there, there's like a pain point, like, ah, I really hate this theme. and This is really bothering me. And I, you know, why am I always struggling with this? You can take a look at that and you're like, oh, okay, this is where I really need to kind of work on being with this in my energy. Am I being more of like pushing and in my ego self or am I being very like waiting for the right timing? Everything in the human design is all about timing. So it's like, <laughs> am I being patient and waiting for the right timing to assert days my opinion? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, sometimes. Am I waiting for the right timing or am I pushing it? And am I just kind of bowling like a, a bull in a china shop with this information or with whatever I'm trying to get done? Wow. And so, you know, I, I haven't really dove into that, like even the gates and the Vedic astrology and, you know, and all of that stuff. It's really neat how I had no idea human design kind of pulled in all these different uh concepts and modalities and, and, uh, healing and whatnot. It's really interesting. This is, this is very new to me. Like I said, all I knew is I'm a manifesting generator and I, <laughs> and I know nothing about it. So, you know, Raven, can someone find their life's purpose in a human design chart reading and how do they do that if they can? Yeah, yeah you can. It's called the incarnation cross. It is your main life's theme, which can involve your purpose. So a lot of it is like your main life energy, like, hey, you might be hitting a roadblock here. <laughs> this is it. This is your main theme. Um, and you can find really what your main energy of your purpose is. Sometimes it's a bit more vague and you're like, oh my gosh, what does that mean? Like for mine, it was it was uh, the incarnation cross of dominion. I was like, dominion, what, you, what in the world? And so then you start to really like, for me, I studied who else has this? How did it play out in their life? Because this theme, it plays out subconsciously and consciously. And typically, it, when it plays out subconsciously, there can be really beautiful good that can happen to it. But also, that's really where you kind of have that area for growth. You're like, oh, this pattern keeps repeating and it's negative. Like, okay, let's look at that. What is that theme? So making sure you're always, you know, making choices aligned with your strategy and your inner authority, that's the way you're going to really live out your life's theme in that positive, beautiful way that you're oh, intended wow. to. So, okay. So I, I guess I have kind of a, maybe a deeper question. Is our human design energetic blueprint something that's created on a soul level, or is it something that's created for us when we incarnate here on earth for our human level? <laughs> I love that question. There's duality. It's for both because the left side is your subconscious and that all those keys and those themes and gates, those are all imprinted when you're still in the womb, three months before you're born. Mm -hmm. And that's your subconscious theme overlapping with your conscious theme of you actually the day that you're born. So you, you do, there is an overlap. It's like, oh, you've got this and that, the yin and the yang, and they might be similar. Sometimes they're the same gate, the subconscious and conscious. And sometimes you have two different, they're not totally different, but you have two gates for the same planet in your subconscious and conscious. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's like, I have this vision of me in my light body before incarnating here on earth, just sitting down saying, okay, I want to learn these lessons. So, you know, this seems like a good time for me to be born. And here's a good, you know, alignment with these planets and I'm going to experience this. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's so much more to, you know, our incarnation here than we even, you know, fathom or even realize. Mm. And it's really interesting to be able to tie this in. And so Raven, are you ready to dive into my chart and, and see what, yeah. uh, what comes up? So Raven, I, I actually provided Raven with my date of birth, my time of birth and my location 
of birth. And we aren't going to share those today on the show. But what I can share with you is that I am a Pisces Aries cusp. So that'll give you an indication of when, right around the time when my birthday is. Okay. So I'm the beginning of Aries, the end of Pisces. And so <laughs> for those of you out there who are like, hmm, where, where does she fit into the chart? But <laughs> let's start off with uh, what you read, Raven, and what came up in my chart. <laughs> yes. So just first off, you are a sacral or pure manifesting generator for six. So what that means is your profile line is for six. <clears throat> you are an opportunist role model, which I can totally see. Like you have, you bring people together you love different, you know, business opportunities. You see how things can work out. And at the same time, you're a role model. Like you feel like you take on a lot of responsibility. Sometimes you don't want it and you want to shirk it. And it's like too much. <laughs> it's yeah. funny you say that I was on a show the other day and it was about leadership and I know I'm a good leader, but sometimes I say, come on, team lead. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to do this. And then they look at me. No, you do it. <laughs> so yeah. that's funny. <laughs> yeah, that's your role model energy of always taking on too much responsibility because, you know, you can take it. But then you're like, yes, can we share the responsibility here, please? <laughs> that's my gung-ho yeah. personality. And then I'm like, oh, I've got too many plates here. Take a few for me. Yeah. Yeah. The role model combined with the mansion is a lot. You take on too much. Yeah. You you are you being the leader of too many committees. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So then again, going back to, this is too much. I can't take it. Go back to your inner authority and your strategy. So yours is to wait to respond. So making sure you're getting that uh, response of, they, I've been invited into it. And then before you say yes, you check with your gut. So the sacral or the pure authority is what you have. So you want to check in with your literal gut and allow it to make noise. So it, you ask you know, your intuition lies down in your first brain, right? Your primal brain of your gut. So you ask it a yes or no question. Is this something that I really want to step into? And then you kind of feel into that. And then a gut noise will come up. And as more you practice your yes and no questions with even small things like, what do I want to eat today? Or do I want to eat peanut butter today? Then you say yes or no. And it's a mm-hmm comes up from your gut. If it's a yes, mm-mm is a no. If it's you know, comes from your gut and the, hmm, you might find yourself doing that noise a lot. Uh -huh. Let me think about it. Yeah. So all of those noises are not rude. That's actually your inner authority doing what it's supposed to be doing. Interesting. I never thought of that. I, I do know I have a very powerful, I mean, being an Aries fire sign, very powerful solar plexus sacral <laughs> area. Yeah, and I can feel it. that when, when my passions come forward. There is no stopping me. It is a fire. It is a raging fire inside of me. And so that makes a lot of sense that I am aligned with that sacral authority. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And Aries, right? The cusp is that initiator, right? That's the mm -hmm. initiating. That's the new year. So you've yes. got the manifesting initiator. You've got the role model initiating energy. You've got the sacral that's defined that fire energy. Yeah. It all lines up. Yes, that's neat. And so, okay, so my strategy is responding. My authority is sacral. What does definition mean on my chart? Your definition is your, um, let me take a look at what your definition is. Single definition is. is what it says. Yes. Single definition is you just have an ease of flow. I mean, the good thing is since you are a manifesting generator, you are a multitasker, but in your chart, you have a very easy flow of the energy. You don't have like two paths it can take. You don't have three paths you have to worry about. You just have that one easy flow in your chart. That could be that Pisces energy that I pick up on too, that that water, that water. Yeah, energy. the water, the water easy flow. Yeah. Yes. And that's connected to like what centers are connected with a channel. But that gets a little bit more geeky about how the definition occurs. Yeah. <laughs> and so moving down my chart, I have a profile four to six, the regal authority figure. What does that mean? Yeah. So that's your, your profile four, six, that four is your, that the regal is kind of like the queen bringing everyone together and gathering for a ball. Like you're always seeing the opportunity in things. You see business opportunities, you see networking opportunities, 
you see people getting together. You might even like set people up on blind dates. Like you just I, have my gosh, energy. I, <laughs> you know? I call myself the quantum connector because my whole life I meet people and I, I file them in the back of my head and then I'll meet someone else and say, Ooh, pull the file. You need to meet this person. <laughs> or I would go when, you know, I would go on dates, I would go on dates and then I'd meet people and I would realize they aren't for me, but I have two other friends who I think you'd be perfect for. And they're like, wait, <laughs> you're setting me up on a date on our date. I'm like, I kind of am. Yeah. yeah that's it. That's really funny. <laughs> and that totally ties into your life theme, which that right angle vessel of love, you know? So you, you're like to be a, a matchmaker would totally be like in another life. That is totally your thing with this vessel of love, as well as the opportunistic and the role model. Yeah. Profile. <laughs> That's too funny. Oh my gosh. That's funny. So, okay. So next is the incarnation cross, right angle cross of the vessel of love. There you go. Okay. We just talked yeah. about that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I'll expand a little bit about that life theme is the, your vessel of love is a demonstration of love in all its forms of expression, like love of life, love of self and sensuality, you know, love of the journey of life, love of the journey of other lives, right? People you meet along the way. You're just a natural conduit of love and a universal energy and a medium for love to Aww. express on the earth. I love that. I love that. <laughs> I'm a Thank conduit. You. I'm a vessel of love. Oh. You are. <laughs> I got to tell my sister that she's a Libra and she's always like, I'm the love sign. I'm like, well, now I'm a vessel of love. So here you, yeah. there you go. Take that. Exactly. <laughs> Okay. So, all right. Next is not self theme, the telltale feeling that happens when you're not living your design frustration. Wow. Frustration. That hits the nail right on the head for me. At every generator and manifesting generator. If you are not making choices according to your strategy and waiting to respond to things, then you'll be frustrated, right? Mm -hmm. Starting something, initiating a course or an event. Let's say you're trying to get an event with people together and you're, you've had the inspiration you start all the things that need to happen to get it to work, but then no one RSVPs, let's say. You're like, oh, this is so frustrating. Like, I had the greatest idea ever. Like, why isn't anyone RSVPing? <laughs> it's just because you didn't wait to respond to maybe having a conversation with maybe one or two of those friends and saying, yeah, I was thinking about the other day. It'd be really interesting to get together for this and that. I don't know, though. And then they could say, yeah, I would love that. That would be great. Now you get to respond to that. Now you're like, okay, I can put that together. Let's get that, you know, event all pulled together. And that's the way you flow versus just doing it without telling anyone and just kind of thinking that it's a great idea. Oh, and having that conversation with my projector friends, so they'll amplify it. So then more people yeah, will show up. <laughs> you're right. Because the projector has that probing aura. Mm -hmm. Everyone just is drawn to them like bees to honey. <laughs> yes. And it's funny because I, my projector friends, I do, I just love them. I love being in their presence. They have a beautiful energy about them and uh, it just, it feels good. It feels yeah. really good. Ah. Yeah. Wow. That's so interesting. And so now next on the chart is digestion, daytime eating, direct light. I sound like a plant. <laughs> <laughs> you are kind of like a plant when you digest, you need to make sure you don't eat when the moon is out always eat when the sun is out. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's and my Aries there too, that water. sun sign. Mm, yep. Your Aries, the fire. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. So digestion and then your strongest sense, your outer vision. Ooh, explain that. What does that mean? So your outer vision connects to your Ajna, which is the right, the chakra Ajna, your third eye, your intuition. And you have a very strategic outer vision, which we've already heard you set an example. You're already on dates, like strategically setting other people up and having this vision. <laughs> After the, the first bite of food, I'm like, yeah. this isn't going to work for me, but I have a perfect friend for you. <laughs> exactly. You're like, how can I like get this together? Right. And that manifesting part of your man, Jen, is the vision, right? And, but you rely on your physical eyes. So it's the outer world, the physical eyes where the not self mind comes from. So you're really full aware of the world around you and taking steps to control it. Interesting. I guess I do. Yeah. Now that I think about it, I do that. And I see things um, well before they take place in the physical too. I, I see things 
almost energetically taking place and transpiring. And then it's like, okay, how do I move from the physical, you know, to get that energetic Mm -hmm. here in the physical. And I've done that. I've had this uh, long-term vision, even in many of my jobs, like for example, I worked uh, in healthcare and uh, I had uh, a vision. I had gone to a conference. I had, there was a guy who got up and spoke who was from NASCAR. He was a NASCAR driver. And I mentioned to one of my coworkers, he's going to come to my hospital hospital, and we're going to do rounds together. And he's going to come all the time, you know, every month. Well, my friends looked at me like I was crazy. There's like, no way you're getting this famous NASCAR driver to come to your hospital. Well, he did. And he came for like, he's still, he's still coming and I'm not even in that job anymore. And <laughs> He's still coming, you know? So it's that. like, I saw a vision of me collaborating with this person and bringing yeah. in a positive energy into the hospital to spend some time with the kids and, you know, share his story. <laughs> and, uh, but my friends around me didn't see that vision. I did. And then I manifested it. So that's something that I do Beautiful. recognize. Yeah. And it's nice to validate it within my chart. Yeah. And that's a lot of what the chart does too. It validates. You're like, oh yeah, you're right. That is me. Right. And which helps to kind of erase the lies of what people out there are telling you or conditioning you into being. And it should really just like, if you ever feel lost and someone's telling you who you are, just go back to your chart and be like, no, I am a visionary. I am the vessel of love. I can get him to come to the hospital and do this. Yeah. And I think too, it's, you know, maybe, I don't know if man gens think bigger I think really big, like my vision yeah. isn't just this small little vision. Like, you know, and I, I, I keep saying that I, I inspire millions through this podcast. Now I'm not in this now moment, but in the energetic and the quantum field, I am. And there'll be a time yeah. when I align with that. And so I am just focusing on that energetic aspect of uh, being this, uh, very influential influence in the world. And so it's just a matter of me aligning the physical with the energetic. And I know it will, I have, I have thousands percent of confidence that it will take place. Mm -hmm. It's just these, and this is how I function my whole life. And so this is very interesting to me because I love this. It's just validating all of what I already know. Right. (laughs) It is. And it's reminding you, right. Don't doubt yourself. You yeah, have absolutely. that vision. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So next on the chart, environment, it says markets, places where there are people coming together to work, whether it's little, literal or vis- virtual, which is funny because that's what we're doing right now <laughs> through yeah. this show. And you thrive in uh, group settings or, that have a common direction. And that is so true. I've yeah. always thrived in team environments. I, I do well on my own, but I do thrive in team environments. Yeah. Yeah. That links up to your part, your, um, your profile four and the environments is kind of like where you live, right? So you're not someone who's going to go live on a mountainside and be like, peace, everyone. Bye. You're a person. <laughs> That's a projector, who, a reflector. <laughs> yeah, re- definitely a reflector. And certain people actually have, like my environment is a mountain. I actually love being very quiet in a space. Like I also love to see things. So, you know, I love to sit up high and just watch people go by on the the sidewalk in front of my house. Like I have, I'm up on a little hill. That's perfect for me. For you, you're going to be right in the thick of it. You're going to be in like a skyscraper or a a marketplace. Like you live, like, you know, those those live work homes, like that Uh would be a perfect type of home for you to just like (laughs) be around and and reside in. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. That's really funny. So Now on my chart, there's a bunch of numbers on the side and I was looking through these numbers and some of these numbers I see regularly. It's like, we call them synchronicities. We call them angel numbers, whatever we call them. But I kind of had this aha moment of, are these gates? Like these numbers specifically 444, 55. I see that 333. These are numbers I see all the time. And these are numbers in my chart. So can you explain what these numbers actually mean? I love that. Yeah. So for instance, I see on the right side, which is your personality, which is the uh, conscious part of your, your energy is it's linked up to Saturn. So Saturn and probably uh, I'll put my book to take a look at what Zodiac sa- the three, three gate is. And then the point, the number after the point links up to what profile line this is linked to. Oh, so the profile line three 
oh, see how complicated this is. I need a book to reference. I'm like, oh, what's profile <laughs> three? Let me think about, I'll have to think through which uh, type is profile three and then gate 33. Let's take a look at, I'm going to see if I can zoom in. If you look into the centers, <clears throat> 33 is in your throat chakra, or we call them centers in the human design. So you have that defined, plus you have it as a channel, which I actually pulled this channel up for you in my notes. So it's connected directly from the throat to the self-identity center. Mm -hmm. So it's actually a really strong energy in you. Which it's makes three, sense because here three, I am three, doing three. a podcast and a YouTube channel, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're, yeah, you are defined here in your throat. And that talks about what you speak about. And let me pull up that channel. So each gate, now, if it didn't connect to another center, it would be called a hanging gate. And each gate has its own description of what it is. And it's connected to an I Ching type of key. And since this is connected, now we call it a channel because that energy is connecting, right? Kind of like a lightning bolt. And it's connecting and creating a high energy channel. So the gate 33 is privacy. It is Leo. And like I said, that I don't know if Saturn is in Leo. Most of the time it links up, but sometimes I think like it might be for some reason. I, yeah. When you said Saturn, I thought Leo for some reason. Mm -hmm. Saturn. Yeah. Maybe Saturn is in Leo in your chart, but in this human design chart, it this is relating to the Leo energy. So it's, you're talking about the story of the past, holding uh, life stories sacred and vulnerable and sharing them at the right timing to help somebody through your vessel of love. Wow. Very interesting. It's so funny. This whole week, we've had a theme of stories. That's the last three guests I've had. So it's really funny that this is even synchronicity. Here we are again, you know, that it's coming up and uh, it just validates to, you know, my sense of power. I do. I feel it in my sacral as a mm -hmm. man, Jen, and I do, mm -hmm. I feel it in my throat chakra. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes I'll have clients that, attract me that have a hard time sharing their words or speaking up for themselves or finding, uh, sharing their truth. And it's funny because I know that I'm, a, I'm manifesting them to me to, you know, activate those areas within them. And, uh, mm -hmm. I've always had an understanding that my throat is powerful. I just never really knew that it was in my chart. <laughs> yeah. And it's defined in your chart. So you have a very powerful, consistent way that you speak. And you have a few of those gates highlighted. So you specifically are speaking and maybe helping others who can't really share their story, right? Helping them clear that throat chakra and sharing them maybe a bit of your story to help kind of allow them to feel comfortable to share their story. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so the other number that really stuck out to me was the 44.4. What, what does that represent in my chart? If I were to pick two numbers mm -hmm. out of there, it'd be the three, three, three and the four, four, four. Yes. That four, 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 let's see, four, four, four. I'm looking in your centers. Where is it? Um, it's like a little bit of a puzzle piece. Where are I you? Know. So you have, you have it strong in your subconscious and conscious in the spleen. So four, four, let me see if I have notes on that. If not, I'm going to pull. And it's relating to the four line. So this is relating to your like visionary, social, opportunistic energy. And the 44 gate. I'm going to see if I took notes. If not, I'm going to pull a book. Yeah, no worries. Mm, I didn't this... note 44. <laughs> and this is fun. So when you're going to be reading other people, you'll be able to have all of this information and be able to pull it specifically for the client. Yeah. Yeah. So this is kind of the process. What are you going to see now is me pulling a book and being like, okay, what is this? And then sharing with you what that theme is. So I'm going to pull it from my, my bookshelf real quick. Okay. Yeah. And so for those of you who uh, decide to schedule a session with Raven, this is very similar to what you should expect. And uh, what I'll do at the end of the show is I'll actually pull up my, ch uh, my chart without my birth date and information okay. on it. So you can have a picture of what I'm actually looking at here. Uh, so you have a better indication or an idea of what it looks like. <laughs> yeah. So gate 44 is 
energy, negate energy. And I pull all these. I love Karen Curry. If you want to learn more about human design and, and learn more from her, she is one of the leading experts in human design. And this energy is Scorpio. Oh. So the um, this chart that I pulled up for you on the my human design chart, I can't actually recognize. It's not Mars because Mars it has just a direct arrow. This has a circle and an arrow. Not your sun. Oh, I see. Next to the forty-four, a circle and a dot in the There's middle. There's a with planet, an arrow. but mm -hmm. I'm I'm used to the traditional glyphs, and I don't know what that glyph is in her chart particularly. It's another planet we don't know about. <laughs> it's another planet. No, it, it's probably a, it's a, the Pleiades or. <laughs> actually, I might. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So when you're looking at the chart, uh, for those of you listening or watching, there is a sequence of numbers and next to each number is a glyph or some sort of a symbol. And so that's specifically what she's talking about is uh, next to each of the numbers. And so like I said, at the end of the show, for those of you on the podcast, you might want to tune into the YouTube channel so you can actually visualize um, your chart, this Pluto. chart, or you can go do your own chart. So that way you'll have a better idea of what your numbers are and what the actual chart itself looks like. Yeah. Well, we'd have to go back to your astrology chart to see what planets are in Scorpio to figure out what that foreign glyph is to me. But um, the energy is coming. It's in your spleen. So the spleen center for you also is defined. So you have a consistent way of experiencing fear, right? The spleen is about uh, survival, fear, and your immune system. Mm -hmm. So you have a consistent immune system. You don't amplify other people's um, illnesses and things around you. Um, you do tend to probably push through physically and then you break down and get sick and have to take a break. Like you I used push to, away yeah. your mm -hmm. symptoms, right? You used to when you are not really conscious about it. Yeah. So that's your spleen. So it is defined. So this is talking about coming to meet is the I Ching. Um, think of the car sales lot, she says. So um, you're the welcomer, which is totally the vessel of love. You're the welcomer to the environment the chakra. wherever <laughs> you are at. Yeah, that's pretty much it. You're the greeter. You're the energy of the greeter in 44 in your spleen, which might help also with when people are afraid. Do you find that people are yes, afraid you can't I console am, them? My whole life I've been fearless and and people will say that. How how do you travel the world by yourself? Or how do you do these things that that would be scary? And how do you move from Florida to the Pacific Northwest by yourself? You know, uh, and it's like, I just, I forge ahead and you know, doesn't mean I'm not fearful in certain, you know, at certain times during the process, but I don't let fear uh, anchor me in to, I guess, paths that no longer serve me. Yeah, that that's your defined spleen. You can just push through easily. If someone has an open spleen, it takes more convincing to push them through that fear, right? Yeah. yeah. Gosh, Raven, this has been so interesting. And I know there's so much more information on this chart, but I wanted to just give a little bit of a picture for the watchers and the listeners out there to have a deeper understanding of what a human design reading is. So Raven, can you share a little bit with us, the, all of the services that you provide? Absolutely. Yeah. I've written a book. Um, it's called Empath and Narcissist, How to Overcome you know, the abuse manipulation. But in the back of that book, I have chapter 12, how to read your human design chart. So if that's something you want to take a look into, you feel like you need a little bit of help with people pleasing or overcoming manipulation as well. That's in that book. And I'm, I'm actually writing a new book that's going to be the human design experiment for empaths. It's that empath, uh, empowered empath. And it'll take each element and kind of give you a week to really like meditate on it, journal about it, and get more in-depth information. And if you want me just to read your chart, you don't want to do all the studies to make it easy. I do human design readings as well. That's wonderful. I love that you're doing a book specific to human design and empaths. It's so important and so needed. And, you know, cause like I just learned that I was an empath, not, not too many years ago, you know, or even what that concept was. And I think when we have a deeper understanding of who we are, and yes, we, you know, in the 3D, we put an identity on that because that's what we do here, right? But we're divine yeah. beings and, and it's just a matter of us remembering that. And when we have a deeper understanding of what our soul blueprint is or what our energetic blueprint is, it just makes 
living in the third dimension so much easier and so much more fun. Right? Yeah, it is. You could experiment. It's the ultimate experiment. You're like, okay, well, I really, let's just see if this works, right? Let's see if I can wait to respond and then see what happens. See how successful it is versus what you maybe were doing in the past, you know, hitting your head on that brick wall and being frustrated. Yeah. <laughs> forging ahead without listening to anybody else. And exactly. now I do. It's like, I'll, I kind of put it out there and then I let it simmer like a little crock pot. And then I just, it comes back to me and I'm like, okay, this, this came back to me. Let me just sit with it. Now I know I'm going to sit with it, feel it in my gut because that's my authority, my, my sacral solar area. And I'm mm -hmm. going to allow that, you know, feeling to come through because I'm highly clairsentient, which means I I feel very clearly, I can feel energies around me. And so now, you know, just listening and tuning into my body, but having a, a more precise focus on where, which chakra, that's very helpful to me because now it's like, okay, I can, I, you know, maybe I'm focusing on my third eye or whatever. And now it's like, no, listen to your sacral, listen to your gut. What is your yeah. gut telling you? There's a reason why we have a gut instinct. And so as a manifesting generator, now I know what what's what's overruling me is is it my thought or is it my gut feeling i'm going to listen to my gut feeling <laughs> and your gut is defined whereas your head your head and your ajna center that third eye they are open so you may mistake one of your thoughts as your own but it's not your own very so interesting your gut is your so i'll have to, to make a little mental note of that yes yeah. especially well, if you're out in public don't ever trust your thoughts yeah, Always I don't. I, I've learned that now <laughs> when I make decisions. So funny because this year, just starting this year, I have really kind of separated myself from a lot of people, not because I'm being antisocial. It's really just more um, tuning into my own energy, understanding my energy, mastering my energy. Also just having a deeper understanding of my own personal belief systems, because I think as empaths, when we're around a lot of people, we can pick up on everyone's thoughts and everyone's energy and everyone's belief systems. And then we get home and we're like upset or frustrated and we don't know why. And we're vacillating on someone else's belief system that isn't yeah. even ours. And so I think this starting this year, I've been really strongly guided and it's easy here because it's winter time. So it's easy for me to kind of <laughs> go within anyway. It yeah. might be a different story when the sun starts coming out and it gets warmer, but <laughs> you know, I've been listening to my intuition, just saying, Tanya, shut off all the distractions around you and just focus on creating your virtual connections right now. And that's exactly what I'm doing. So it's funny that came up in my chart that I would be connecting with people either in person or virtually. And it's been very strong connection with people virtually, specifically this podcast, this YouTube channel, my client sessions, everything is on the computer. And I have never felt more whole and more aligned and more balanced and more in harmony in my life. And I'll have people say, but you're not having any physical connection with people. I'm like, I am, I'm still occasionally connecting with some of my friends, my projector friends, you know, some of the ones yeah. that feel good, the right but, friends. Yeah. yeah. But right now in this current moment, I am being completely fulfilled and satisfied with these virtual connections. So I think, you know, I, I guess I'm bringing this up for those of you out there that feel like I'm all alone. I, I'm not connecting with my friends at dinner, like I used to, or I'm not doing the things that I used to physically, but I'm connecting with people virtually and that's okay because it's all energy. It's all mm -hmm. energy. <laughs> it is. And you can reach so many more people. I think that's your vessel of love kind of coming out going, I can reach and touch so many more people and connect with more people beyond the globe, right? On virtual versus just right here in my backyard. Yeah. And I feel just as an empath too, and I think this is part of my energy mastery is in person, I feel a little bit more drained than I do connecting with people virtually. And so mm -hmm. I'm sure there'll come a point when I will be out public speaking and I will be doing those things. But right now, what I'm manifesting is not that. I'm manifesting being a, a an extremely influential, inspiring podcaster. So, you know, that's where my focus is right now. And my focus is not standing on a stage and speaking to, to thousands of people, not to say that that won't be in my future, but right in this now moment, this virtual, it's really been very powerful for me. And it's nice Raven that you have 
kind of defined that within my chart and given me that validation. I, I feel goosebumps and oh, yeah. I know when I feel goosebumps, that means it's, it's truth. It's divine truth for me. And then my eyes water. See, <laughs> I get goosebumps <laughs> and then my eyes water. It's like a big, a big hug from source or a big hug from God. Like, Hey, finally, ding, ding, ding. You got it. <laughs> it is. And you're open centers. I just wanted to point that out to other people that can relate to you. Cause I can relate to where you're out in public and, or you're listening to something and in the moment, it sounds right. It sounds good. You're like, oh, that's a great idea. Or, okay, I'll believe that. And they really get, you, you know, you get on their bandwagon. You're amplifying, like I said, with your head and ajna. And then your will center is also open. So then you're amplifying their will to believe that. And yeah, you, I can totally see how you're exhausted out in public. You, you know, learning to shield your empath aura and really being aware that you need to put a screen up around ideas people share with you you know really putting that mental screen and sharing the the agenda like of don't feel also you have an open route so you feel probably in the past have felt a lot of urgency yes to like buy something that someone's selling you and you're totally into it and then you have that remorse it's those two energies you're amplifying that and you feel so much pressure just to do it to get them to go away <laughs> and all of those are just different life lessons of putting up that screen and knowing that not everything is for you. And it's not always correct to get something done or say yes to have someone go away from you because then now you're left with the consequences. Yeah. And that, and I think it's a lesson in boundaries too, you know, as empaths yeah. learning to uh, set boundaries and not feel guilty about the boundaries that we set. And so, you know, it's hard for me to tell my friends, Hey, I need y'all to release me right now so I can walk in peace on my path because I am being guided to go within. I'm being guided to spend more time alone and in my own energy and my own thoughts. And immediately society wants to think, what's wrong? Is something wrong? Can I help you? Do you need help? And the reality is, is no, I just, I'm, I'm in alignment right now. I feel so at peace and I feel wonderful. And I wonder too, Raven, I do notice this. I speak things into existence for people very quickly, specifically my clients. Like they'll say, I'm working on manifesting this. And I'm saying, okay, let's set this intention. And I speak an intention with them. And then boom, I've had situations where their things have manifested really quickly. And I've said to myself, how can I manifest things for other people so fast more than me. And I know it has to do with resistance because I don't have resistance when I'm speaking something into existence for someone else. But I'm wondering if that's also a characteristic or a quality of a manifesting generator is that we have the ability to also assist others in speaking things into existence. And that's why we feel drained in, you know, in public because others subconsciously recognize that, you know, that quality yeah. within us. I don't think it's the manifesting generator part. I think it's your role model part and your defined throat and being, you also have that defined self identity. So having that real true defined self um, really allows for people to channel that. Yeah. You're definitely a powerful, and again, the vessel of love, like you just have that power and channel. So for yourself, I don't know, maybe consider yourself like, channeling more love to yourself. And this is also a challenge for us empaths, right? We can love and aid yeah. others, but we forget to love and aid ourselves. So it's probably just pouring back a little bit more of that vessel of love to yourself to manifest yeah. it. <laughs> That's my new saying now. Who are you? What are you, Tanya? I am a vessel of love. <laughs> you are. That's your new podcast tagline. <laughs> That's my new tagline. Well, Raven, this has been so fun and I appreciate you taking the time to read my chart and yeah, to, to spend time with us today on the show and to go through all of the detail of human design. So how can people connect with you? Where is the best way for people to reach out to you? Yeah, the best way is my website, ravenscott.show. And you can purchase your human design reading there. You can take a look at all the blogs I've written, um, listen to the podcast. And there's an empath healing community that I host as well there. And then we kind of hold a chat on Patreon and we're learning about human design in there as well. It's one of the main tabs of the membership. That's awesome. So for all of you empaths out there, go check out Raven's podcast, go check out her books, go check out her website. Um, 
If you want to do your own reading online, but you want more detail, like Raven went into more detail on my gates and all of the, the planets and, and whatnot, then reach out to her, get, get yourself a session because it's really fun. And it's really exciting. As you could see, uh, I very briefly looked at my chart before this show because I wanted uh, to just be, you know, kind of raw, a little vulnerable, a little uh, open to receiving the information. So this was all very new and very uh, validating, very inspiring to me as well. So if you're feeling guided to reach out to Raven, then please do so. Go visit her website. And Raven, I appreciate you coming on the show today. This was such a fun show. I've never done a live reading like this. And uh, maybe I'll do some more in the future because this was really fun. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. It was, so, it was such a pleasure to share with you, you know, that that who you are and how you can shine your unique light out into the world. Yeah, thank you for having me. You deserve to navigate your life in alignment with health, happiness, and abundance. To learn more about the services that I provide, including Beyond Quantum Healing Hypnosis, EFT Tapping, and the Emotion Code, visit my website at www.theexistentialempath.com.